Hello, everyone. I am so excited to be speaking this evening and talking to you about watching historical context using historical videos. So we're going to dive in a little bit, but again, I'm very happy you're here and that we can share this evening. Let's talk a little bit about historical context. Historical context is the political, social, cultural, and economic background for events, ideas, and or people. Well, why does that matter for genealogists? It's because our ancestors didn't just appear. Our ancestors lived rich and full lives surrounded by history and historic events. We have our trees, we have the information on our families, and it's the names and the dates and the places. And I like to think of that as the bones of your family tree. You have, you have the, the bones there, and then adding the stories, the historical context and everything else is adding that meat, and it's making it a much fuller, richer picture of who our ancestors were and how they became who they became and how we become who we are. It's this incredible cycle. And so you wanna look at what these ancestors have done and what they've lived through because they are unique people. Um, they had their own victories. They had their own um, sadness. They had their own um, issues with their lives, whether it be positive events uh, in history or negative events in history that have impacted their lives and or impacted their families' lives. So it's very interesting to look at the historical context and try to figure out, okay, how does my ancestor fit into this? Now, we can talk about all these different things, events, ideas, and places, people, etc. And one of the things I want to note is that you can look at the events, at events in history, and kind of see how your ancestor fits into those events. So, for example, we have this picture from Ellis Island. It's unfortunately undated. It is from the Library of Congress collection. And I did give you the citation for every single one of these images and videos that you're going to be seeing. So you can pull these up from home and take a look and explore a little bit more. So you have Ellis Island. Our family members came over, many of them, and many landed in Ellis Island. And what was that like? Now, for most of us, they could have come over earlier than there would be film. The first known or saved, I should say, video is from 1888. That's the first one that we know about. Anything before that, we truly wouldn't have a moving picture of. We would have images, we could have drawings, we could have all sorts of things. But I wanted to bring about a program about looking at videos, looking at these films, these historic films. After seeing one pop up in an email I got from Library of Congress, I was very curious. I was just staring at it going, this is, this is incredible to be able to see people moving and what their experience was like. So you have Ellis Island. And I'm going to go ahead and click on this. So these first ones are Library of Congress, and they have such an incredible collection. This is from 1903, as you can see. Imagine your ancestors coming over on a ship like this. Imagine your ancestors being in this image. How powerful is it to actually see this moving past you? So 
seeing these people land. Did your ancestors come with what they could carry? We're gonna stop there for now for this image. But it's just so powerful to be able to stop and look and watch people depart barking when they get to Ellis Island, when they get to their destination. And you want to be able to look and see things like this be impactful for your own history, your own genealogy. Now, you're not maybe going to find this type of image, of course, for anything before that 1888 and probably not before the turn of the century into 1900s. But this could still give you a glimpse at what this life was like, what the experience might have been like, to see what people carried to shore, to see what people had with them, and who was around. You have these men sitting on the side just watching. What was that like? So it's kind of a different thing to experience and kind of get an idea of. So what about military? What about the Civil War? I mean, many of us have ancestors that took part in the Civil War or other military events. Now, you're not going to find videos of the Civil War knowing what we know. But what about other videos? If we start looking, what else can we find? We can find the funeral of Hiram Cronk, who was actually the last living War of 1812 veteran. At his funeral, military veterans marched. So you can find images of military veterans from the Civil War in this video. I also think it's pretty fantastic to, to watch and see. If you look at the kids, they periodically keep looking at the camera. They're very intrigued by it. You have that one boy that just keeps staring. But this would have been an event. This would have been something to see. So if you're looking for military, you may not find precisely the military images that you would want to see perhaps, but this could give you an idea of, okay, what did they look like? How did these processionals go? What did the, the funeral parades look like? We don't wanna spend our entire time together watching entirety of videos. Some of these are quite long, so keep that in mind as you keep looking. And when you're on the Library of Congress website, you can skip ahead and go back and kind of explore a little bit. And I think that's kind of helpful as well. So here we have a tenement house in Harlem. And let's go ahead and take a look at a video. From the Library of Congress in Washington, DC. You will have that memorized by the end of this. So this just goes down the street, but I thought it was a very interesting video because it shows some of the housing, but it also shows the people. 
and the push carts with wares for sale. And my absolute favorite is again, the boys. If you watch these boys, they're absolutely hysterical. They're falling over themselves, running into traffic, trying to wave, jump up in front. And there's one that, there he is. <laughs> Does the hand on his nose. This was a novelty to see a camera. So they were very excited. <laughs> but it's really interesting to look around and see the people and what life might have been like for our ancestors if they had lived in this location or during this time pe period. You can look at the, the fashion. You can look at the modes of transportation. You can look at how they're selling their wares. You can look at, OK, the buildings are built this way. It's really a glimpse into history to be able to see what's going on, not just in a photograph. This brings history to life in a way that you may not see otherwise. So this is Charleston doing the Charleston in DC. Um, so it's a representative from Charleston and a couple of flappers. And so in looking around and trying to find a video that might be of interest with the roaring twenties and the fashion. From the Library of Congress in Washington, DC. I found a home video for an actor, which seemed very interesting at the time, an actor and makeup artist. And it kind of just goes through. You can see that they labeled it. Some visit. So not only do you get to see the fashion and their vacation spot and what they're doing, you also get a sense of how they would speak, even though there's no sound with this film. Not very nice to the puppy's tail, but puppy seems to be okay. <laughs> so you want to look at different things like these videos to see what you might discover for your own ancestors. There we go. These are real living, breathing people, just like our family. And then we go into the Great Depression. I'm glad Susan knows who Lon is. I was curious if anybody would pick up on who that was. So we go into the Great Depression. What was that like? Well. Luckily, there's promotional videos from the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. What does the picture of men building a sewer mean to you? Nothing, perhaps, if you live in a community that has an adequate sewage disposal system. But to the people of thousands of cities and towns throughout the United States, sewers are a vital problem. Whole communities have been swept by epidemic diseases directly traceable to an open sewer. Whole families have sickened, yes, and died from disease that started in a cesspool. Many of the plagues and pestilences of the Dark Ages were caused by the inadequate facilities for disposing of waste material. Yet until recently, vast parts of our own country were in the Dark Ages in this respect. That is why more than 5,000 cities and towns are using the opportunity for sanitary improvement offered by WPA to build and repair sewers. The immediate result of the work that these men are doing is apparent in enhanced property values. So you can see that we have a promotional video now for the WPA, and it's showing the different things that are being done to improve sewer works. And then it's gonna go through and this video is actually quite long. It goes through housing, it goes through a bunch of different things, um, helping children, et cetera. So 
you can find videos like this. And one of the things I want to note is that if you're searching these videos, you want to play around with the different search terms. And we'll go through that a little bit later when, we, when we're in Library of Congress's website. But I wanted to just kind of remind you to keep an open mind. Again, this is not traditional gene genealogy research. This isn't putting a name into a database and getting results or even a type of a document. What you're doing is you're just kind of searching for that historical context to understand where your ancestors were and kind of getting an idea of what you might see to kind of piece things together with that story. Because our ancestors are more than those names, dates, and places. They're stories. They were living, breathing people. And then we have, we go into World War II. And I actually put this as propaganda. So this is encouraging people, women to become Red Cross volunteer nurses aides. And then we're going to see from the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. From the Library of Congress. In there we go. So you can see that there's a lot of promotional propaganda films from that time period. And actually, it's very interesting to start going through them. Many of the posters from that time period are only viewable at the Library of Congress. So I find that interesting. They have some sort of copyright on them with the government. But these promotional videos are just absolutely fascinating to me. Um, they have some for the 1940 census when it came out, um, talking about the greatest generation. And then you have these films that talk about, oh, we are the, the world power. We have the greatest men. They, they go out and they fight and et cetera. So it's very interesting to look at these different films. And for many of you, not to, I'm not saying ages at all, but for many of you, this may be your parents' generation. So it could be interesting just to get a better understanding of your parents at a certain point in time. So it's kind of interesting. I decided to include this one too. Um, I thought this was kind of interesting. This is General Electric in Fort Wayne. Um, so we have there's a general electric plant that is being turned into um basically housing businesses etc and so i think it's kind of interesting to look at this and then knowing that from the library of congress in washington dc you can look at different films like this that talk about technology and how it's evolving. This one's delayed slightly. The little kid is my favorite with the little toy dog. 
I absolutely adore seeing things like that. But it's interesting to look at this and it's so hard for people to look back and remember, okay, uh, at a certain point there, there weren't radios really accessible. There weren't phones really accessible. There weren't TVs. I know some of you are going to sit back and be like, well, I remember when we got our first TV or I remember when I got my first cell phone or et cetera. And that's incredibly true, but we have to remember that we're trying to share our genealogy, our family history with generations that are younger, and they're going to have absolutely no concept of that as well. So when you're looking at these videos and you're probably thinking, okay, well, this is interesting and I haven't experienced perhaps this, but I've experienced something similar. I need to teach future generations how these bits of technology and the development of technology impacted my family, my ancestors, my parents, myself, because they don't probably understand what that impact really means. You look at kids today and I mean, most of them can probably hop on a computer and figure everything out within a matter of minutes. So it's kind of fun to look at things like that. But let's look at places as well. This is Chicago in 1897. And I'll tell you, there isn't, there, there isn't a video online for every location. And sometimes you have to get very creative to find older videos of locations older films of them. But let's go ahead and just look at a few just for our sake now. From the Library of Congress in Washington, DC. So if you're familiar with Chicago, corner of Madison and State Streets. The mass of people. This has. And let's go ahead and look at Galveston from the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. Anyone know what happened around 1900 and well, in 1900 in Galveston? Yep, hurricane came through. So there's multiple videos. Yeah, and it, it, there was a huge flood too and cyclones. So there's multiple videos on Library of Congress's website of the damage. I just chose one to show, but it's just fascinating to look and see what happened and compare it to what happens after a hurricane here. Yeah, not unlike 2021. Let's go to the other side of the country. From the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. Let's see what Seattle has. First Avenue. Anyone notice the sign? Yep, gold. People will go from Seattle up to Alaska. You don't have quite the rush of people, but you still have the movement. You still have the people coming and going. You still have a glimpse of what the streets would have looked like. How about New York? Now look at that date. This is an early one. 
from the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. This has been... It's so quick, but the fashion and being able to see the movement, it could be priceless. A lot of times people don't learn by just reading something or by seeing a static picture. Sometimes they have to see a video, they have to see movement. And maybe this is the thing that will hook another family member of yours into family history or genealogy beyond just adding more of that historical context. But let's look at some of these websites. I wanted to spend some time on them. So let's take a look at the Library of Congress website. So many of you have probably already been using the Library of Congress website for research. There is a lot of information here, but I want to specifically note that there's videos and you can search for those specifically. And you can search by location. Um, you can search by event. You can search by maybe even just something that evolved like technology. So let's go ahead and just type in maybe a general location. Now, I went ahead and hit search, and it's going to bring back so many materials. To be precise, over 200,000. Now, instead, I want to go to films and videos and then do a search, but you can also change it over here in the filters on the left hand side. Now, the other thing that you're going to notice is that we immediately get films that are more current and then films that are older. So what you might want to do is go over to the side and select the date. So for example, maybe we want to just look at the 1900s. So what we're looking at here is if you see something like this, Let's see what this says. From the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. That actually looks like fun. It's a very interesting seesaw there. Any of you have done an exercise like this? So what I want to note is that if you scroll down, it's going to give you more information. So it's going to give you the title. It's going to give you a summary. So it tells you what exactly you're seeing. And interestingly enough, even though I put Oh yeah, so we got Kansas City instead of Kansas State, which is fine. It's just a different, they don't know what part of Kansas I'm looking for. So Kansas City is what's gonna come up. And you can see the contributors, you can see created, published, subject headings, genre notes. You can see the duration when it was filmed. So April 18th, 1904. Um, so it's all this great information that you can utilize. Now, then you have the rights and access. So knowing whether or not you can use it for something, what the citation information is, so you can pull that pretty easily. So this is just one video that we were able to find through a search. Um, so we have some more from this Missouri Commission. It looks like they did quite a bit. 
uh, it looks like there's, we're pulling this up. So this is what I find interesting. So I searched Kansas and I'm getting the Roosevelt Memorial Association Flag Service on the steps of the New York Public Library. So that's something that you have to keep in mind. You're not going to find just things on this specific location. You have to get very creative with these. And so that makes me wonder, okay, where's the Kansas coming from? Right here, governor of Kansas. So it searches the entire summary when you do a search. So that's kind of my warning. Uh, I, I enjoy things like this, the fictional old West town named Bad Milk. You're gonna find lots of fun little things like that. And then if I go back up here, let's say, okay, I found that. I can also change my location over here, but I wanna change the date. I wanna go ahead and say, I want the earlier one. What was the earlier one? All right, we have two different things. We have the advance of Kansas volunteers at Kalukan. So it's the National Guard and this is 1899. So I can go into this video and start looking if this is something that might be of interest. From the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. So you can see what exactly this is and go through all of that same information. Let's go back. We also have Colonel Funston swimming in the Bag Bag River. Um, so this is a reenactment from the Spanish-American War. Um, so this is all pieces of history. It's something for you to look at and kind of get an idea of what you may be able to add to your own family history. Now, let's say there's an event that you wanna look for. So before I had done um, military. So let's do, actually did a search for civil war, but let's just do military. And also that's something to keep in mind. As you start typing, they're gonna finish it for you. They auto fill and you have to actually go in and delete. So let's do military. And so we're gonna get different things like speaker discussions, panelists, stuff like that. So if you want the earlier films, you want to go in and start clicking around to the dates. And what's interesting is even though I have films video selected up here, I'm still gonna get the photo print drawings for some of these. So you wanna make sure, okay, I'm not getting exactly what I want, I want videos. So then you can start getting some videos. Okay, I'm gonna look at, let's say I wanted this, Theodore Roosevelt reviews the French troops at Vincennes, France in 1910. Okay, perfect. Um, so you can find all sorts of fun stuff like this. There's that funeral of Hiram Kronk. And you get all sorts of different pieces of information. President McKinley reviewing the troops at the Pan American Exposition at Buffalo in 1901. Did anybody's family members go? And then you have some royalty. You have King Edward's funeral. Emperor Francis Joseph. So these are different pieces of history that you might be able to explore and learn more about just by doing a simple search. Now, some of these things you wouldn't think, oh, military would come up, but maybe military is involved um, somehow. So you wanna make sure that you get super creative with this.
let me get rid of some of these. So another thing you can do is see what the sense of humor of our ancestors might have been. Anyone want a dog? That can do flips? Made from sausage? Okay, this is where the sense of humor gets a little weird. So they pick up the dogs and put them back in. So we'll stop there. So they have the patent dog transformer. So this is a, just a little comedy that was put together. This is a breed of a dog and it goes through and it talks about what happens, but this is an Edison film. This is vaudeville. It's a very early film, 1904. And it's something that we can take a look at and go, okay, so this is what they found funny. This is their amusement during this time period. And take it and see, okay, how would my family member have reacted to this? You can also see, okay, Boy Meets Dog. There's a animated little film from 1938. So there's a lot of different things that you can find. Now, make sure to utilize the filters over here to the left. You want to make sure that you are choosing what you want. And this is true with anything that you're searching on the Library of Congress website. You can look for images here. You can look for other types of things. You can find maps, manuscripts, you can find uh, newspapers, periodicals. Library of Congress is who puts together Chronicling America, which is a fantastic free newspaper resource. So make sure that you're looking through and utilizing everything that Library of Congress has to offer. This is just kind of a small look into films and videos that could be something to add just a little bit more background to who your ancestors might have been. But let's go to Google. I've noticed that people have been putting in, um, somebody put Fort Wayne, Indiana in 1938. So that's the thing I want to know is that you can search different search terms. You can put in and see if you can find different videos. So. Let's do one that I had put in the handout, 1800s videos of Florida. Now, what you're going to find is if you search something like this, keep this in mind, you're going to find videos that people put together of static images that they go through. So this very first one even tells you that it's old pictures of Florida. So if you want to actually see okay, I want specifically something that is from that time period. You wanna look and see what they say. So this is Florida memory. So Florida memory digitized videos and film footage from their collection. Awesome. So then you can go through and see which video might be of interest. So you can look and see, okay, what was logging like? Uh, what about orange juice, cattle ranch in Florida? Um, this is a comedy. I was trying to figure out what that video was and I had to watch it just to see. Um, it, this is a grown man pretending to be a baby. <laughs> 
scenes of the Everglades is actually the one that I put the link in. Um, Luna Plantation, an event of Thanksgiving. You can look and see what the environment was like. Um, folk life, politics and war. You want to see what President Kennedy? Okay, you can click on that. Emotional and tourism. Care and feeding of a mermaid. <laughs> What about sports and recreation? How about the Daytona 500? And what's great about these, these videos and what you can do is you can download them and then it gives you different pieces of information. Now, I like this website because if you start scrolling to see the information, the video pops up in the corner. Um, I think that's actually kind of cool, but it tells you what's going on. There's a crash. It's, it's a short video, but kind of interesting from the 1960s. Let's go back. So the one that's in your handout is scenes of the Everglades. You see, this is quite a bit longer. So if you wanted to see what the Everglades look like, this is something you could explore. Let me go back. Now, something I want to note is there's no exact science to what to search. You can play around with this to see what you can find. I did another one of Canada 1900s videos. My history is even bringing it up. So if you look at these, okay, so this is an old video in color from 1900, and this one's on YouTube. Okay, 1925. So you can see that I just did a simple search. Now, Google is your friend. When you're looking for things like this, that's what's gonna help you. So if you know that your family is from a specific location, so Fort Wayne, and what did you guys say, 1938? Then you can start finding different videos. So I believe this is the one that you were referring to. So then you can start going through. Now, just kind of keep that in mind. There may not be a video for every location that you're looking for. You could start looking and say, okay, I'm very interested in, I don't know, Plymouth, Indiana. Video. You may not find something that's historic. from 2018. That may be as historic as it may be. We don't know. You have to kind of explore and see what is in here. And it may not be on YouTube. It may be on a specific website for that town or that county. It may be a local university. So it's interesting to look and see what you can find. It's going to be different for each specific location. So I cannot 
encourage you guys enough to do some different types of searches and to be creative. And most of all, ask for help when you don't know where to go or what to look for.